So we've had the grapes and the juice in this container for about, uh, about nine days now. Uh, over that period we've been pushing the grape skins back down underneath the juice and we've been able to see all of the bubbles and all of the fermentation each time that we've pushed the skins back down again. In the last few days that fermentation or those bubbles have slowed down quite a lot now um, and the skins aren't being pushed to the top as much. There doesn't seem to be as much action happening in there. So we're thinking that this is now ready to take it off the skins or get rid of the grapes and keep the juice. So we're going to now transfer the juice from here into these containers. Uh, these have all been sterilised and cleaned. Uh, Elaine cleaned them yesterday and we've sterilised them today. Uh, yeah, and we're going to uh, get the juice off and hopefully turn that into some wine. Something Elaine did also read about online was we're going to take the skins and we're going to try and make a vinegar, a red wine vinegar with the skins as well so that the skins just don't go straight into into compost so that's another little experiment as well along the way so I'm just going to do a little taste test of our grape juice or grape wine whatever it is and see how it is it's definitely got a wine flavour to it but it's definitely quite tart as well so it's quite um, it's not at all vinegary, which is really good news, not at all vinegary, but it is quite acidic, I would say. It kind of catches you a little bit at the back of your tongue. Fruity acidic or a dry, like a dry wine? I would say... As he drinks it all. <laughs> I would say it's definitely got fruit there still. Definitely fruit, so it's a fruit acidity. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I think that could be all right. Good. Even if it's just as a mixer. <laughs> we'll see. Over ice. A mixer over ice. So what Darren's doing is carefully scooping out all of the grape skins because we want to retain those and then squeeze them through the muslin and the bit that is, the, the juice that comes out, we'll then try and turn into um, like a red wine vinegar. Mm, nice colour. It's a beautiful colour. Yeah. It's working! Good. It is. I'll try and keep it slow because obviously we're going to the smallest funnel. Um, so I'm going to try and keep it as slow. In fact, it's, it's perfectly fine, I can see it. There was a lot less wine came out of the grapes than we thought so rather than leaving a big air gap in one of the bottles we used the juice that we had reserved to make vinegar and used it to fill the bottle up. So sadly no red wine vinegar this Christmas but hopefully some wine. Unless this turns into red wine vinegar. Yeah, then we'll have 10 litres of it. <laughs> well, I really hope that wine works out. If not, we'll just have lots and lots of red wine vinegar. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Today, what I want to do is use up the last of the tomatoes that I have. We've been eating them quite steadily as well. We also were given another huge bag of pears by the same neighbour that gave us one of the bags of pears um, last time. So we have to use more pears guys, we just have to use more pears. Um, what I did do last night, different friends in the village invited us to dinner and I made an enriched dough and then I made cinnamon buns and I sliced up the poached pears that I made previously and put those into the cinnamon buns and then baked them. <gasps> they were amazing. So I might show those on another video in the future because we definitely want to eat those again. What I've got here is basically most of the ingredients that went into this chutney 
I made several weeks ago. I didn't actually show you how I made it, but I mentioned it on a previous video. Um, just a small batch, just using up what I had when we couldn't eat all of the tomatoes all at one go and the pears. And I'm going back to my favorite book again. Um, and what I'm doing this time, I'm, I'm using two different recipes. I love to do this. So I look at one recipe and I think, oh, that's lovely, yes. And then I look at another one and I go, oh, that's equally as good. So I try and sort of do a combination of the two. So I love doing that. And I'll share the complete recipe with you in the description um, at the end of the video. What we've got basically are tomatoes and pears. The tomatoes are all different varieties and sizes. Some of them are a bit green still as well, but that doesn't matter. It's all going in and it's just going to get used up. To give you an idea of what we've got going in today, we've got the pears, tomatoes, uh, some white wine vinegar, onions. I'm going to zest and juice the lemon. A piece of ginger about the size of the top of your thumb. The figs that Darren picked just the other day and the, there's about a hundred grams of figs just sort of to add in. Um, these are like a, it's not a spring onion it's called Allos Francais and it's like a leek but it has a garlic aroma and taste and they only grow sort of small. In my cup, I've got some brown sugar, salt, chili flakes, cumin, and some turmeric. So I'm gonna get on and prepare all of the veg and the fruit. But first of all, I'm gonna put the vinegar, sugar, and flavorings into my pan so that they can start to warm through just gently and infuse all of the flavours. Ginger, lemon zest. They're just going to infuse gently while I prepare the rest of the fruit and veg. Here are my chopped onions and my little garlic leeks. What I'm going for in a chutney is to try and get everything a similar size so that it cooks evenly. But some of the things that are really soft, like the figs, I might leave just slightly larger just so we don't lose them all together in the, in the mix. It's a really good one for using up tomatoes that are just not quite ripe. Because it's all going to go in the mix. I've even got some cherry tomatoes and I'll just leave those whole. That's our figs, pears and tomatoes all going into the pan. Now we bring this to the boil and cook it for at least 30 minutes. Then we start to check and see that it's the right consistency. So we'll just leave it and let it do its thing. Nearly forgot the lemon juice. 
just do that and pop it straight in. I thought I'd bring you in to have a look at what stage we're at now. This has been cooking for about 30 minutes but I know it's not quite ready so let's have a look. So you can see it's bubbling away nicely like a good simmer all round and I've stirred it several times so it doesn't stick but when I pull the veg through the channel fills up again with the liquid and it is quite liquid I want that to be a bit more syrupy so we just cook it out for a bit longer and while that's cooking my jars are sterilizing in the back now we can see that when we draw it back there's a much clearer channel and the liquid that's left is very syrupy so that's ready we'll turn the heat off and get our jars out and get it jarred up just quickly before I put it into the jars I'm going to give it a quick taste purely just for the salt um, it will be very vinegary because it needs to sit in the jar sealed for a month before you eat it just to let all of the flavors meld together but you want to make sure that it has enough salt. I know the teaspoon of salt is probably the right amount for this um, volume of fruit and veg, but just to double check. It'll be very hot. Yep, yeah, that's nice. It is very vinegary, but that will subside as it sits. It's got a nice balance of sweetness from the fruit and earth from the turmeric and the cumin and a little bit of background heat from the chili. So if you like more chili, if you like it hot, then you could put a little bit more in. Darren doesn't like it hot, so we just went with half a teaspoon. But that's that tastes like a, a, a good balanced chutney. Try not to touch the jars because they're hot. But we'll clean the edges. So that's three jars of lovely chutney ready for later on in the year. Um, I've put the lids on really tight as it cools it will suck the lid in and make a vacuum seal no need to water bath it when they're nice and cold tomorrow I will try and remember to put labels on although I've noticed I haven't put labels on the the ones I did a few weeks ago and we will be able to enjoy this lovely local produce later in the year I hope you've enjoyed what I've done with all of these lovely fresh produce. Perhaps you've got things that you're growing or have foraged or have been given. So why not give something like this a try? A chutney is so versatile. You can mix ingredients in and swap them out depending on what you have. But that's it from me. So thank you very much for spending some time with me. Take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye. My cameraman has gone.